small and unglamorous retail outlet had become a model for corporate America, you might think at first that something's fishy. And as Bill Geist is about to demonstrate, you'd be exactly right. In Seattle, long, hard work days start early at the Pike Place Fish Market. Let's go! But these fishmongers don't seem to mind slinging slimy, smelly salmon 12 hours a day in an outdoor market that's cold as a mackerel. You want to get some fish? Somehow, they never get crabby. Two crabs! Two crabs! Go ahead and get the head, heads off and fillet them. And when someone buys a fish, duck. Fish fly and orders echo through the market. I kind of try to make it a little more showy, I guess. Uh -huh. Now, do you ever hit a customer with a fish? One day I hit an Amish woman. She was a little bit taller than I thought she was. <laughs> Tourists line up to catch this seafood spectacular, often finding themselves part of the show. Over in Las Vegas, Jesus, and the love of God. A lot of fish fly over the counter, and now we got people from all over the world come just to see us. John Yokoyama is the ringmaster, owner of what used to be a quiet, small, shrimpy little fish shop. What happened? It started 10 years ago when we, as a group, took a stand that uh, we were going to become world famous. No ad campaign or anything. He just yeah. said it, and it was so. Do tuna steaks! Do tuna steaks! His guppy-sized sales took on big tuna proportions, and his staff grew from six to a school of 21. If you find that a little hard to believe, what follows sounds like an absolute fish story. Now, thousands of companies are paying $600 a piece for videos and up to $20,000 for live reenactments oh, of this flying fish act. The corporate world is hooked using the Pike Place fish market to inspire and motivate employees. One fish flying in the air! One fish flying in the air! Oh. Oh. Slinging salmon has been elevated to fish philosophy, and John's become a business sage. It's mind-boggling for us, but a lot of people do come by the shop and to meet me. Do they think you're a genius? Do they think you're a guru? I mean, I don't know what. Fish philosophy has four simple principles. The first one is play, which means have a little fun at work. Dozen packs! Dozen packs! is make their day. Engage customers, make them part of the fun. That's how it's gonna come in. Okay. All right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 sounds simple, be there. That means to be there with you right now, like I'm trying to be with you. Like you're not looking over my shoulder That's right. thinking I'm looking, about something else. That's right. Yeah. To actually pay attention to you. You know, make sure that you take care of that person that's in front of you. And the fourth principle is choose your attitude before you go to work in the morning, just like you choose your underwear. What about if you went to work in an office and shuffled papers all day? Wouldn't it be a little more difficult to do? I don't believe so. I think it's no? a shame. No, it's, 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 it's all a choice. Couldn't be this much fun. Well, you know, it could be if you made it. The four fish principles have spawned a corporate training industry, featuring a whole book of fish philosophy, a business bestseller with 250,000 copies in print. There are more and more new fish videos, now in 12 languages, and workbooks and guides and Pete the Perch stuffed animals with more than a hundred thousand souls. And there are lively fish seminars run by John and his crew. And they look like in sync up there, but they're corporate savants. We're here a little today to share a little bit with you on the process that we went through and how we got three or four emails requesting the possibility of us showing up. It's starting to get overwhelming. So it 
it's like it's taking ownership for your part in what's happening. Say, I declare I'm going to make you know, Metropolitan Travel the best company to work for in the United States. It's taking ownership for it because then it's yours. How does throwing fish apply to being a It can be hell if you let it, or it can be really exciting. I mean, you can schlep fish or you can schlep reservations. You're out giving a presentation to a bunch of insurance adjusters or CPAs or lawyers. I mean, they can't start throwing the uh, paperwork around the office, can they? You know, you have to create your own uh, form of play. I mean, right. you know, if you're in a, in a doctor's office, you can't throw <laughs> bedpans around or anything. That's a, but how about throwing a little love to your patients? Followers from around the world make pilgrimages. It can be market. hell if you let it, or it can be really exciting. I mean, you can schlep fish or you can schlep reservations. You're out giving a presentation to a bunch of insurance adjusters or CPAs or lawyers. I mean, they can't start throwing the uh, paperwork around the office, can they? You know, you have to create your own uh, form of play. I mean, right. you know, if you're in a, in a doctor's office, you can't throw <laughs> bedpans around or anything. That's a, but how about throwing a little love to your patients? Followers from around the world make pilgrimages to the market, the mecca of fish philosophy. Like this jeweler from Detroit. You throw your jewelry around, or how do you adopt no, the fish philosophy? we just throw the jewelry boxes. Like we'll show, we'll throw a um, bracelet box or a ring box, and then you know we'll throw it across the room, and somebody will package it up and give it to the customer. That works even for diamond rings. Even and... for diamond rings. Okay. And it's a little less Surprise stinky. Surprised that corporations <laughs> around the world now are taking your advice on how to run their corporations? I'm totally surprised. I got it. Very. Uh, it's very, very uh, humbling. It's um, quite an experience to have people come down here and, and tell us how much we've changed their lives. A little fish market that could has scaled the heights. And with things going so swimmingly, what next? And our new vision is world peace. And we feel that if we can communicate like this, like we do at Pike Place Fish, be in relationship that we are at Pike Place Fish, and we love each other like we do, and we communicate, that world peace is a possibility. World peace? That's a whale of an ambitious goal for a minnow-sized fish market in Seattle. But John says the fish spirit is highly contagious. And people all over the world are catching it.